what would you do? Uh, you have your granddaughter over, you're enjoying yourself in your swimming pool in the backyard, and all of a sudden, Mary Jo Pennington uh, decides to go up on the diving board, and she yells out, my God, I have broken my baby. Uh, what happened? Well, I, I climbed to the top of the sliding board. Uh, we have a slide that goes down into the pool with great caution and care because I hadn't done that in over four years. And as I got to the top, Victoria said, Macho, can I come up and slide down with you? And I said, sure. And she, I didn't realize she would just scoot right up behind me and she was just right behind me. And my, my old knees just gave way and I fell flat really hard and my body hit her and she went flying backwards at a very high rate of speed and it was nine feet to the concrete. And I just screamed, oh God, I've broken my baby. And uh, I kept screaming that and screaming it and... Uh, Don, you were watching. First of all, what, do you, uh, what was your profession? I'm an engineer. All right, this is your granddaughter too. Right. Uh, what did you see with your eyes? Well, I was in the pool, uh, alongside the pool, just about opposite where the sliding board was. And I heard Majo scream. I wasn't looking at her at the time, but I heard her scream, oh God, I've broken my baby. And I looked up in time to watch Victoria fly backwards away from the uh, sliding board. And she stretched out horizontally. Mm -hmm little body stretched out horizontally, and I saw it rotate 180 degrees so her feet were pointing in the opposite direction. While she's still horizontal well, while in she's the still air. Horizontal. Uh, what, how, how, you're an engineer, how can you account well, for it that? Was, what I was seeing was not making sense to my brain. And uh, then I saw her almost float, and not only go straight down to the concrete, but she moved over about six feet away from the sliding board and settled down on her little backside and her elbows and her hand. And I just couldn't believe what I was, I, I expected to see her body flying in all kinds of parts. So you obviously went to examine what was going on. What were you, were you still on top of the sliding board? Yes, I couldn't get down at, at all. Um, and I couldn't see her when she was behind me. And then suddenly, and she didn't scream. I was screaming, but she didn't scream. But suddenly I saw her settle in my view where I could see her uh, and I felt as though I had to keep my eyes on her. If I glanced away, she'd fall into a million pieces. I just had to keep eye contact with her and, uh, and I, I was still screaming, I've broken my baby, but I just knew uh, th that if I stopped, I don't know why I thought I could hold her together just by looking at her. And, and then Grandpa came around uh, to uh, check her out. What, what did you see? Well, she was trying to get up. She says, Grandpa, I'm okay, I'm all right. And she was physically trying to get up. But I made her lay still. And I said, please let me check you all over because I did not know what I was gonna find. You're telling me she fell over thrust like with a force right. and fell nine feet onto cement? Right. Yeah, so what was with her? So I checked her all over. I checked the, you know, her head and, and out of her neck and her spine and her arms and her legs and uh, and they all worked and there was no blood and there was you know she appeared perfectly normal so at that point I did let her get up and then I noticed two little places on her body she had a, a little scrape on her right elbow and a little red mark on her palm and that's the only evidence of any injury that I could find okay you're an engineer you're a logical man uh, how do you account for this? It's not making sense to my brain. Well, it didn't make sense to mine and I can't account for it now. Uh, except in light of the, what we learned later uh, from talking to Victoria. But at that time, it just made no sense to me at all. Now, now Majo, uh, when you heard your granddaughter talking to her mother on the telephone, you got your first inkling of what really was going on. What did you overhear? She said, Mommy, I'm not broken. Majo knocked me off the slide. And I heard God yell, save the children, catch Victoria. And six big, big, big angels came and caught me and zoom, took me right up to heaven. Now, Don, 
Is there any other explanation for how she fell and the fact that she didn't break her body? Not, not to me, there's not. I can't just, think of anything. Uh, no, uh, we just thought it was just a great miracle of God's uh, you know, protection that uh, kept her from serious injury. But when we heard you know, that her, or talked to her mother over the phone that she had gone to heaven, it, we were just, we didn't know what to think at that point. Speechless. Okay, they had like a home video of Victoria when this happened and her reporting on what she saw. Let's go to that right now. All right. Now show me what happened. When did? Show me. When the, the angel caught me, I said, boom. <laughs> okay. Now, um, <laughs> That's kind of because she's seven now. Yeah. Uh, so, that boy, she, that, I, I can see where you <laughs> went from Ive to a miracle. Yeah. You must have been one grateful grandmother. I was. I couldn't stop thanking God for this wonderful blessing that He gave us that He saved her. I just couldn't stop. And she keeps going back to heaven. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Don't go away. I know you'll be back. <laughs> We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Mary Jo Pennington. And she's affectionately called by her granddaughter, Majo. And uh, Majo, you got the shock of your life, your granddaughter, uh, you fall, knock her off of the top of the sliding bar, and she falls down uh, somewhere like nine feet onto cement, but she falls in almost a suspended state where she changes her position. Uh, your husband said there is no human explanation. That's then right. you overhear hear her talking on the telephone to her mother, and she said, six? Six big, big, big angels caught her and Zoom took her up to heaven. Um, now, then I'm sure if it had been me, I would have questioned my granddaughter at that point. What'd you do? Well, we were so surprised that we couldn't think of anything intelligent to ask her. So we asked her uh, what color were their robes and their wings. And their robes were white and their wings were uh, white, shiny, sparkling. And the angels themselves glowed. Um, and when they had, I said, how big were they? She said, really big. Their hands were this wide, like from here to here. She's, and, and they were warm and glistery and glowy. And when they hold my hand, she said, when them hold my hand, my hand glowed too. They made her light up like a light bulb. She shone like a light bulb. Now, where did they take her? Well, they took her up. Uh, she said they pass all the things that she likes, the trees, the birds. They passed an airplane that was taken off and they were going straight up and the plane was going sideways. Uh, she looked back and the earth was getting smaller and smaller. It, when she first saw it, it was like rounded and then it got to where it was like a little ball. And, uh, and then she, uh, they got to a place, it was way beyond the stars, that uh, there was um, a stairway that had angels going back and forth up to heaven. And, and her six angels and her continued up the stairway. And uh, when they got to uh, within, they told her to look ahead. And it was like there was this big glowing. Um, she said she thought they were going to land on the sun. It was so glowing. And they got closer and closer, but it wasn't hot. It just was glowing like the sun, but much brighter. And when they landed, she was in front of a gate. and. Uh, uh, a small angel that had been coming up along with her uh, up the stairs uh, came over to the gate and tickled the gate with her feather. And the gate laughed and swung open. Now, when she went into heaven, uh, she saw some babies. Tell me about that. Yes. Uh, she said an angel came out to tell her where was Jesus and then took her to the baby place. And the baby place that she first was taken to was 
a really big, really large, beautiful building, and in it were, were long, lots of, of tables that are very soft, and Jesus and the angels were working on little babies that Victoria could hold in her hand, uh, and they were making them whole. Uh, and the babies, even though they stayed little, they instantly, as Jesus made them whole, uh, had mental capacity to be able to speak and understand. And they were made strong uh, to where they could use their arms and their legs, uh, but they stayed little. They, they grow as normal, the normal size that they would on the earth, but when they're made whole, they have full mental capacities. Mm. Now, in your book, you talk about some terminology she uses about, uh, she said that uh, yes. the baby was squeezed out. Explain yes. that. Um, she, she went to this other room that had a beautiful baby room and this, this little baby, the first baby she saw, she said her was squeezed out of her mommy before her was old enough to live. And, uh, and we met several babies there that were, and then she started to tell me about a little baby that had gone full term, but she, she started to look kind of sick when she told me about her. She said she was the garbage baby. And I, you know what, a four-year-old, yeah. is there any way a four-year-old would know about abortion? No, there's no way. Uh, but she, each of the babies that had been aborted were this little, and, and they, they were squeezed out before they were old enough to live. And then the garbage baby was left at a dumpster and it died. Uh, and when the, the garbage baby uh, told her that story, she became a little sad. And they went and got a, a kangaroo, came and put him in her pouch. It was a warm, uh, warm, warm place for this little baby to be. And, it, and, the, and the kangaroo actually uh, took him for a ride out in this beautiful park. And Victoria couldn't fit all the way in and she hung her legs out and they went bouncing. They would bounce as high as the sky. And, uh, and you know what, if she was making this whole <laughs> thing up, here, here's the deal as I see it. Number one, the way she fell with not anything even broken, you can tell there's something supernatural. To me, I don't have a better explanation than angels caught her. And for a four-year-old to have such a graphic description of abortion, uh, but it gets even more exciting than that. She sees things in heaven that we read about in the scriptures. Again, there'd be no way she could know these facts, but uh, let's go to a clip of a report on the children she saw in heaven. There was, there was eight there was boys, eight girls. There was eight boys, eight girls. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Sid Roth here with Mary Jo, affectionately called Ma Jo by her family, Pennington, and her four-year-old granddaughter should have died, fell straight onto concrete, but she didn't really fall. She was like carried down by angels. She saw the angels. Her grandfather, who's an engineer, said it is humanly impossible for her not to have hurt herself and to have fallen and turned in midair the way she turned unless there was some supernatural help. And then she went to heaven and she talked about seeing little boys and little girls. Tell me about that. Yes, she saw eight boys and eight girls, and these children uh, ranged in age from around four years old to 10 years old. And some of these children uh, had been aborted, uh, squeezed out before they could live. But one little boy, we found out in an unusual way, we were uh, having, we were at uh, putting flowers by my mother's grave uh, about two weeks after she fell and she had to find the grave of a little boy. She just had to. It was urgent for her to find his grave. And Didn't they, you kind of wonder why a four-year-old is looking for a grave of someone? Yes. Her mother walked all over this huge cemetery looking for it, and the only way she found him, uh, she finally mentioned that the, we wanted to leave and come back another day. And she said, but the tent will be gone. And uh, a, 
Apparently she had observed the tent from another place and knew from the tent how to get to where the grave was. And so they, um, they started looking well, at all well, the tents. Well, observe the tent from another place. What she saw mean? it from heaven. That's what I thought you were saying. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Nicola, yeah, Michael uh, showed it to her from heaven. And uh, Michael? Who's yeah, Michael? The, one of the eight boys and eight girls. Okay. And this is the little boy she's looking for. And she, um, when they finally looked around and they saw a, a, a tent, over beyond my mother's grave and about 90 feet. And so they drove back around and she walked up to that, turned her back to the tent and looked out across the cemetery as though getting her bearings and walked straight to this little boy's grave. And she said to her mother, what does that say? And she said, honey, it's a, it's a, a little boy. His name is Michael. She said, this is it. And uh, she saw him in heaven, and uh, she said, why do we need to find his grave? And she said, because there's another one. And she later revealed to us that he was killed in a crash. She told us how the crash happened. It was in the newspaper exactly as she told it to us, except she told us that the car was forced off the road by a big uh, monster truck with lump, lump tires. And then it hit a cement thing. Uh, and then it went through the air, turned upside down, and landed at a tree. Well, the newspaper did not give the account of the monster truck because that, uh, that person left the scene. But the car actually uh, had been stopped by a cop and, and, uh, and had then uh, left. And after it left the cop, the, this was all in the newspaper, it... Um, could someone have read that article to her and that, and she just made that up? No, uh, Bubba, her brother, uh, Patrick, went back the next day to the cemetery and got the name off of, this, of the uh, Tombstone. marker, yes, and went to his school and looked it up on the, on the internet and the newspaper clippings uh, were there and he printed them and brought them to us and we were, we were just astonished. Because the first thing our mother said, ask her what color the car was and we did, and she said it was red. She said, ask her if it landed upside down or right side up. She said upside down. So that's when she told me all about how the wreck happened. And I was telling it back to Sandy, and Sandy was saying, man, I've got goosebumps. This is so unreal. It's just exactly like it is in the paper. Now, what did she mean there's another one? Well, there were some custody battles after that. The little boy had lived with his father, but he was visiting his mother when her uh, boyfriend wrecked the car and they were both killed, the, the man and the little boy. Uh, and the, the little boy wanted his sister to stay with his father, actually. He wanted her, him not, her not to have to go with the mother anymore. Now, how did, how did you know all of these facts? They're in the newspaper. But so he there, told, there, there's really no explanation for Victoria <laughs> to have all this information. No, none at all. Except to prove to you that there's something way beyond. A, yes. Look, I don't, you know what, if you didn't even have those facts, I don't see how a four-year-old could imagine what you're not telling me, even if you didn't have that verification. We, we have never been able to find the, the little boy, uh, uh, his parents. Did, did he, did the little boy tell uh, her anything else? about the situation? Yes, he, he said that he had been mean to kids at school and that when the accident happened, he had a stick th th through his throat and he couldn't speak very well, but he was trying to say, God, forgive me for being to the m mean to the kids at school. So as young as he was, and he was only four and a half when he died, uh, he knew his heart needed to turn to God even as he, was, he knew he was dying. He asked God to forgive him for being mean to kids at school. Not that he would have gone, not he would have gone to heaven anyway, but he knew his heart had to turn to God at that moment. Now, and she, then the angels took him on up to heaven. You, you told me of something else that was interesting that by your swimming pool, uh, people report seeing angels now? Yes. Uh, there is a lifeguard angel that's at the diving board all the time now. Um, he's very large. Uh, sometimes I can see him pretty clearly. I can see uh, like breastplate, uh, little brown, like chest breastplate on him. Uh, I have seen him 
very well, but other people can too. Uh, when you step out our glass sliding door and look toward the glass sliding door, uh, the sliding board, you can see like a mist in the shape of, uh, of an angel that's, that you can see through it, but you can clearly see him. And what happens is the, the bars on the sliding board will reflect in his body. You can see them reflect several times up in his body. And mm. there's no reason for them to reflect. There's nothing to reflect there. Well, I also understand that your granddaughter, Victoria, goes to heaven often. Yes, she does. In fact, she said when she doesn't go to heaven, heaven comes down to her. Uh, what does she mean by that? She can often just look up in God. She can see God in Jesus just right there. You, uh, you do realize that th what you're telling me is very hard for a lot of our viewers to believe. I bet it was hard for you. What convinced you? Uh, I did. A lot of times I have doubt, uh, but but it, I'm always. Uh, convinced because there's no way she would know what she knows. When I, she's a very normal child. When I ask her uh, what she does when she goes out to play, you know, if she can always look up and see God there, uh, she says she just doesn't look up. She, uh, she has to keep her head where she can't see Him so she can just be normal and play because a lot of times all she has to do is glance up and see Jesus or God. And I tell her, don't go out close to the road. I don't want you outside by yourself. She said, I'm never by myself. Jesus is always with me. Yeah, you know what I loved <laughs> in the book about when she sat in God's lap? I don't know about you, but I would like to sit in God's lap. Yes. Well, she had seen God at the baby place and Jesus and her family. But when Jesus and her at the end started to the throne room uh, by themselves to go and tell God bye because she was going to come back, well, Jesus wanted her to stay. But uh, when she entered the throne room, she was afraid of the living creature. She saw things with lots of eyes and they made lots of noise and, and they scared her. But once they got past that, then God motioned to her to come to him and she ran to him and he allowed her to climb up his leg and across his lap into his lap. And, uh, and she- Now these uh, living creatures are described in the Bible in the throne room. How was her description compared to the Bible description? Well, she now calls them the four faces. But at first she said when she was very small, uh, she was only five when she said, they have lots of faces on their face. And mm -hmm. she said they have uh, lots of wings, they have lo lots of eyes on them and their legs go down straight and they don't have toes like us. <laughs> how could she have known this? <laughs> how, how could a four-year-old have known anything <clears throat> like this? You know, Mary Jo, it's, it, if you just open your Bible and you turn to Ezekiel, the first chapter, and you read this four-year-old's account of what happened in her book, it's, it's just like the Bible. She even talks about seeing the lion with the whiskers, the but eagle. she sees something in heaven that there is no way she could have known that happened to Majo, Mary Jo, many years ago, which revolutionized Mary Jo's life.